and drop it down in. Now, let's say this, these walls are not square. And it's important for you that they are square. A simple trick I do is I just throw a framing square on my cleats and I read what the framing square does and I duplicate that on my um, piece of shelving. And I do the same, and then I measure. Once I've gotten that, right, once this thing is, say, slightly out of square, I'm going to grab a framing square. So you'd put that framing square, and you might want to use a shorter square because if the closet's as small as we're talking about, this really wouldn't work. But you put that guy on your cleat, and then you see what the wall does. And so if there's a gap here, you measure that gap, and then when you lay it out on your shelf, you lay it out exactly like that, and you duplicate that gap, and then you cut that line, right? You cut on that line, you draw that line, and then you measure. Once you've got that one angle, then you can go over and measure to here, and then measure to there, and measure on your piece of shelving, and cut to that measurement. So you really don't have to do this. You don't have to do it on both sides. You only have to do it on one, okay? Hopefully you got that. So then you drop your shelves in, and if you fit them tightly, you might just press fit them, uh, but you tack them from the top. This is all usually finished nails, the gun nails is great. Uh, if this was 5 8 drywall and studs, I'd probably be using a, an eight penny nail, a two and a half inch nail. Blam, blam, blam on the cleats, blam, blam, blam on the cleats. And then on these guys, I probably, three quarter material, probably use an inch and a quarter just to get it down there. There's not a whole lot, hopefully gonna be smacking them up. And, and then you may wanna just, if you cut them tight enough, just press them in because all the weight's down on the cleat and the cleats are nailed so that if you ever wanted to change them, you could just pop them out. And uh, I don't know why you'd change them though. <laughs> I would nail them. But you don't have to nail the heck out of the shelf to the cleat because it's not really going anywhere. All your weight is down. So that's cleated shelving into a framed and drywalled opening. Now, uh, lead in or dadoed shelving, that would be way more appropriate for a cabinet, but you certainly could do it in a condition like this. You would just basically make sides. You'd, you'd make a plywood side or MDF side for both sides of your wall. So this would be a, a whole side, right? You'd cut that whole side and you don't need anything for the back. And then, and then on that side, you could, um, you could do lead ins and just slide your shelving in. So in other words, you do the shelving would have a lead in everywhere your shelf was and a corresponding lead in or a dado on the other side oops right <laughs> that's pretty badly drawn but then your shelves would just slip into your dados so that would be a lead in or dadoed shelf, which you could do in a, you know, in a, in a closet situation like this, but you'd be more than likely, um, like you'd be more than likely apt to do it in a condition where you were doing like a storage cabinet behind doors or something like that, like I showed you initially over there. Oh, I gotta get rid of that. That's such a horrible drawing. Okay, so that's, Fixed is the shelving you're going to use for uh, storage closets, linen closets, stuff like that. Cleated fixed, it's the way to go. It's the most economical, it's the fastest, it looks clean as a whistle. Um, buttered and fastened, now that would be something like, when I say buttered or fastened on a fixed shelf, that would be... If you had um, a cabinet, right? Cabinet side and a cabinet side. 
and you had a shelf, you could just butt it. You don't have to put it in a, you don't have to cleat it. You don't have to put it into a dado to lock it in, which makes it blind. And then you just nail or screw it from the back. All of your shelves would butt, nailed, screwed from the back, and they're fixed. You're not moving them. They're not supported by cleats. They don't need to be. They're supported by the nails and or screws you put through the plywood, right? So the plywood goes like this. And actually, I'll draw that one better. And then you'd, all along there, you'd nail, right? All along that shelf, because the shelf would go all the way back. Okay, so that's butted and fastened. Now I want to get to the meat of this thing. Cleated shelving. Again, it's what you're going to probably use for uh, pantries, uh, niches, you know, niches with or without doors. Um, but really, I want to show you a closet, a closet shelf, a, a typical closet layout that I really like. And... Uh, and you can do it with MDF, you can do it with plywoods, you can do it to your closets, you can do it to your customer closets, you can do it um, for money or you can do it for fun. <laughs> I like to work for fun and for free. Hmm. Even if it's for money. Okay, so let's take a typical closet and uh, I will probably do a drawing of this closet at some point and submit it to you guys. I think I have a drawing somewhere in my archives of this particular closet, but let's just take a closet that's going to have, um, it's going to be a six foot, let's make it an eight foot closet. Let's make it an eight foot closet, okay? Let's make it eight feet. And by the way, uh, closets, shelf and pole is kind of an art in itself, as you might imagine. Closed closets need to be 24 deep. That's 24 finish, 24 deep. If you frame them 24 deep, are they going to be 24 deep? Yeah, they will be 24 deep because you will add drywall to the back and you will add drywall to this edge. So that drywall and that drywall will cancel themselves out. They'll still be 24 deep. So a typical closet is going to have say an eight foot closet, it's going to have, um, it's going to be framed, right? In two by fours. Only, it's not going to look like that. It's going to more than likely come in with a couple of, at least a stud and a trimmer, at least. It's gonna look more like that with a stud and a trimmer. All right, but let's say, uh, let's say the eight, the back wall is eight feet, 96 inches. And then the opening, let's say you're gonna lose, let's say you lost six inches and so your opening is, uh, is 7-0. A pair of 3-6 doors, butt-hung doors, right? That's how that closet's accessed. And you got eight foot of closet, and it's 24 deep. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, you know, so this is a prime example of when you draw to scale, which this is not, but fitting your stuff to the page. So I, I really, I think I have room to put this over here and fit it, but, um, and I don't wanna take up too, I think I can do that. I think you guys can see that. Let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. So this closet, but you know what? I want to draw it. I'm going to draw it a little different. Am I? Let's see. Am I going to do it? All right. So let's do this. In 96 inches, let's build. So I'm going to, if for purposes of this exercise, I'm going to forget about the opening at seven feet for now, and let's work on the eight feet part. So let's, let's draw this baby. 
8 feet by 6 8. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> let's get it low. Let's get a little better level. A little, little more vertical there. If we're going to really draw it, let's go ahead and really try to draw it. That's bad too. It's late in the day, guys. I've had a long, busy day. Started out on a job site uh, with guys doing demo, digging, and busting up for footings. Okay. So there's our eight foot of available space on that back wall. And it's six, eight tall, right? So um, shelf and pole. is what we do for clothes closets. We do shelf and pole. Poles for hanging, hangers, clothes, and the shelves are for uh, putting folded stuff on or whatever above. So a typical shelf and pole is just a shelf on a cleat with some sort of support for the pole, uh, and it can just be uh, right off the cleat, and it's at 12 inches out for the rosette, and there's your pole. And actually, your pole is down at two and a quarter, so on a kind of on a hook strip cleat. And I'm going to tell you about hook strip in a minute. Your rosette would be there, so that'd be your pole, and that's supported by rosettes on either side. And it may have a corbel support. It may have one of those um, those brackets that you can buy, those metal brackets. So shelf above, uh, hangers go on the pole. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this closet with a um, adjustable shelf cabinet or a fixed shelf cabinet. But for purposes of, uh, of what we're doing today, let's say we're building an adjustable shelf cabinet. So we're going to build this guy here and we're going to build it. Oh, shelf and pole. I'm backing up a second. So uh, single hanging. Single hanging equals 66 inches. The top of pole, top of pole, top of cleat, uh, doesn't matter. It, it's close enough. 66 inches double pole. I like 40 and 80. But 39, 78 does it. As low as 36, 72 does it. But uh, much, much lower than that, 36, and you're not going to be able to have um, hanging room. You'll be brushing the floor. So we're going to get our ideal here at 40 and 80. This guy is at 80 up. And remember, we're going to be working back in here. So you are going to be able to stand there at an 80-inch height and look in your closet and be able to access a little bit above that, right? Because you can reach above it because our shelving is only going to be uh, 12 inches. Okay? 12 inches. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run cleat and we're going to run it all the way because we got good nailing. I take it back. We're not going to run the cleat. We're not going to run the cleat. Yes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to build an adjustable shelf cabinet out of whatever. And it's going to be a very simple cabinet and it's going to be, um, it's going to be right at uh, 80 inches tall. So it's going to be right at that height. It's going to be right in the middle, center line, and it's going to be a 32-inch cabinet. It's going to sit on a toe kick, which is going to be a loose toe kick. Am I right? Yes, I am. But in this case, since it's a single cabinet, you could definitely do that as an integral cabinet. And I, I'm just so used to doing loose kicks. But because of the closet and the fact that we're not skinning that the unfinished ends as finished ends, I think I would make an integral kick then. So this toe kick, then a cabinet side would have an integral kick. 
And it would look like that. Thirty two inches. Right? In a simple cabinet. with uh, fixed or adjustable shelves. You can plow these sides and put in those standards that go into the dado. But I would, I would bore it. I would line bore it. I would get a template made. I would buy a jig. I would lay it out, and I'd bore it for adjustable shelves. And I, so the top would be fixed, right? Top, and you could, do a, you could do a rabbit joint on the top. I, li I like the idea of a rabbit joint on top, so that top looks like that that piece right there, and then your top sets on the rabbit, and just tack it like that. This is perfect for NBF, by the way. And then, um, and then really, if you wanted to do fixed, you, could, you don't have to do adjustments.